Hey guys, welcome back to section two where we're going to be diving into deep learning with PyTorch. This is going to be a very slow video or a nice introduction um, where we're going to be getting familiar with deep learning. So we're going to be talking about what deep learning actually is. It's not going to be very maths heavy or programming heavy. So it's a nice, easy one to kind of watch and just slowly ease yourself into deep learning. So deep learning is going to be a multi-billion dollar industry. And by 2025, it's expected to reach 10 billion US dollars. Now, obviously, this is a lot of money. And at this report, basically based on the fact that deep learning can solve a lot of problems, you know, self-driving cars, um, Netflix recommendations, spam filtering, deep learning is very, very good at doing these classifications and issues that basically where we want artificial intelligence or machine learning to be able to make decisions. And deep learning is going to be have a very big impact in that region. Mainly, this giant growth has been due to improvements in GPUs. And that's because, as we can discuss later, deep learning is highly parallelizable. So that means it's well suited to work on a GPU because GPUs do lots of small calculations in parallel. That's exactly what we do in deep learning. We do tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, linear um, multiplications in parallel. So GPUs very well suited for deep learning. So what exactly is deep learning? You know, I keep talking about it, of course, so let's just briefly describe it. It's essentially the process of designing a neural network, which we'll talk about in the next slide and then training the parameters of the neural network with thousands of images. So we developed this neural network, which is very flexible, very large graph effectively. And then we give it thousands of training images and let the network learn an appropriate representation for the task at hand. So rather than designing the model in a bespoke way, like you might do in classical machine learning, we basically say we've got loads of data Let's just let the network learn its own representation and then it should be able to work very well. And often it does, you know, deep learning, you get big, big gains compared to previous methods for machine learning. So, and the motivation really for a neural network came a similar way to how the brain works. So in the brain, you've got lots of synapses, lots of small neurons that are connecting to a very simple thing. They just pass one signal on and maybe change it slightly. And it's very similar to how a neural network works. So here we go, here's a little bit more detail. So here is this graph representation. There's my mouse. So you imagine you pass in data. So you've got a five vector, a vector of length five. And these are all scalars in here. And then you're gonna learn which or where to pass the scalar from this node to this node, and this node to this node, etc. So you don't, as an architect effectively, you do not determine these connections or the multiplications that happen in these connections. That is purely down to the network when we train it. Okay, so we pass in this information and we let the network learn how much it wants to multiply values when it goes to here to here. If it wants to do that, you know, here it doesn't want to do that as an example. And then it propagates all the way through. And the idea is that you'd have lots of layers. So this is your first layer. This is your first hidden layer. So a hidden layer is one that isn't the input or the output. And then you propagate the information through. One other thing that happens in the neural network is something called an activation function. Now, in each node, when we get an input, so let's say we pass, let's say this is a value two and we have a weight three, and then we have, this goes into here and it could be six or something. It then goes through what we, a non-linear function or, or an activation function. And this effectively allows us to then model non-linear behavior in the data set. Because if we don't do this, effectively all we're doing is lots of linear algebra and big matrix vector multiplication. And then you're just going to get a linear network. So you can you add non-linearities to kind of tweak the behavior 
and help the network learn a more accurate representation. So how do we train a neural network? So we train a network using a loss function and something called gradient descent. So if you imagine we've got a neural network and we've got a way to tell how well it's doing. So we pass some example images through our network and we get a score of the accuracy. Now, if we can parameterize that accuracy in terms of the network parameters, we could then find which direction we want to move the parameters such that it minimizes the error. And that's effectively what gradient descent does. We have, let's say we've got an error that we get it up here. And then we know we can take the gradient of this error function because we've parameterized it in such a way. And then we find the gradient and then we move in that direction. So we move down in that direction. So here we move the parameters m from minus 3 to about minus 2.5 okay and then you just keep doing that you pass in more information or you do another batch of data samples then you get a different gradient move along move along move along move along so it's effectively almost like it's not quite trial and error but you try something and then you get a guess or you get a direction in which you want to move to decrease your error okay so that's basically how gradient descent works